Rub up your engines! Well, Shell's profit have nearly tripled in the first quarter of this year, up to $9.1 billion. And here's what they say, and I quote, We have strong results in volatile times. They're making a fortune. They've almost tripled their profits. And they say, well, you know, it's volatile times. No, no, no. Triple profits. What don't they understand? Yeah, maybe it's costing them more money to get something, but they're making three times the profit. So really, it's just another scam, an excuse for them to raise prices. Heck, in Great Britain, they're not talking about a win windfall tax on the gas companies to ease the cost of living for everybody else who's got to pay for these greedy swines that want more money and more money and they just get away with it. And here's another hilarious quote. The impacts of this uncertainty and the higher cost that comes with it are being felt far and wide. We are working through the challenging implications to provide support and solutions where we can. Yeah, to make money for themselves. What a load of crap. Well, it costs us more. Yeah, maybe it does cost you more, right? But you tripled your profits. So you're just screwing everybody over, as usual. They do whatever they can get away with. And they just make excuses. Well, these are troubling times, and we need to make sure everybody's got their energy so you're warm and you can drive around, and we'll triple our profits, by the way. That's our society today. People talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. But there it's so obvious. The figures are out there, because even more hilarious, they want the figures to get out there so people invest in the company more. Look, it's a profitable company. Invest in us. We're making a fortune. It's just insanity. It really is insanity. Well, the news is out now. Ford is talking about they're going to get rid of a bunch of the stocks that they have in Rivian, the electric truck company, right? Well, all I got to say is we got some stupid people here at Ford. You're in the stock market, right? They originally put a bunch of money into Rivian. Then it went into the IPO, initial public offering of the stock, and the price went real high. Well, what did Ford do? They sat on it. And what's happened? It's gone right down the toilet. And now they're talking about selling shares. Does Ford not understand? You sell when the stock is high, not when it's collapsed and is low. If they do sell, it's kind of of a last-ditch effort at Ford, meaning they think Rivian will go out of business, which who knows, maybe they will. They only make a handful of vehicles, and a lot of the original promise turned out to be just that. Ford said, well, we're going to use the Rivian skateboard platform, and we'll build our Ford electric trucks on that. They said last year, the year before, they're not going to do that. Ford's building their own electric trucks. They're not using a Rivian platform. Amazon put a bunch of money in, right? And they said they're going to build all these electric trucks, and I think 100,000 of them for Amazon. Who sees if that's ever going to happen either? They're having production problems. All these people jump on this electric car and truck bandwagon. Don't they understand that none of this stuff has proven anything yet? And anybody that puts all their marbles into one basket, hey, look at Ford already. Now they're talking about getting rid of them. When the price is low, hey, Ford. Lord, listen, basic stock market, buy low, sell high. They bought low, it went high, and now it's low, and they're selling. <laughs> Well, it's corporations. What do they say about corporations? Dead from the neck up, right? Well, this kind of proves it, doesn't it? <laughs> Bain says, I got a Ford EcoBoost 2 liter, PO303 and white smoke, 85,000 miles. The heater quit working. It was low on antifreeze. White smoke is coming from the tailpipe. Before I replace the engine, should I send it to the auction? Sure seems to me like it's misfiring because the head gasket's blowing. You got a misfire on number three. You change the coils and you still have the misfire. So it's misfiring probably because the head gasket is blowing first around cylinder number three, right? I've had phenomenal luck with the bars head gasket leak sealer. I get it at AutoZone, a lot of stores, O'Reilly sells it. Now I find if you get the bottle that costs like 25 bucks, that's the best one. It mixes with all antifreezes. You put it in, eh, sometimes it'll last for years. You never know. Then you can think, you get another engine, or if you're sick of the whole thing and at least it stops smoking and the code goes away and it runs okay, then just sell it to Carvana if they still stay in business before they go bankrupt because they're overpaying for those vehicles anyways. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they go out of business at some point in time, but still, they're overpaying because they charge too much and they need a lot of cars. They sell hundreds of thousands of cars, so they need to get them and then sell them, get them, sell them. They don't even check them out. A friend of mine sold his to theirs. They just came. They looked around. They even started up. They pulled it on the truck, gave them a check, and away they went. So maybe you can get some decent money for it. And it Seal it up good enough so you get rid of the stupid thing. Nick says, Nissan Sentra, the AC doesn't cool. It lost it gradually. I got a recharge kit, but I can't get it to kick in and cycle. How can I do it? All right. Well, it's very simple. The compressor on your car is a magnetic clutch. There's 
wiring goer to it. Check to see which one is the power wire. All you have to do is get a little jumper cable and jump the power wire from the positive terminal of the battery to that cable. Then it will come on. Then you can fill it up with the recharge. You can watch my video how to refill your AC with refrigerant. It's easy to do with one of those cans. You got a little gauge on it. And you'll probably find it'll start working. The problem is when you don't have enough refrigerant in it, it won't turn the compressor on. So you got to override the system to get it going. And once it's going, you take the clip off and it'll work perfectly fine. Since you said you gradually lost cooling, odds are you got a leak because when you get a leak, when it gets really hot, it won't cool as well. Eventually, there's enough leaked out that it won't work at all because if the pressure gets below a certain parameter, the switch will not send power to the compressor. So you got to send it power and then you can fill it all up. That's how long they last. I mean, what? It's a nine year old Nissan. They will all leak. By then, you just fill it back up again. Chappy says, do I need a new adjustable ball joint for an 05 Dodge Magnum? I'm replacing my suspension, my 05 Magnum. Some kits have a non-adjustable ball joint and others have an adjustable ball joint. A lot of guys says you really need an adjustable one, but I don't know. If you want to rebuild it better, get an adjustable one. And here's why. If you have an adjustable ball joint, as the things wear on your vehicle, a good front end alignment guy can compensate for that wear by adjusting the ball joint. And that'll change how the wheel sits, right? Back in the day, my grandfather's day, a lot of cars came with them because they made them so you could actually fix them over a long period of time. But today when they build them, they build them as cheap as they can. So they just put ball joint in, away they go, and then you can't adjust it. And they kind of like it. So if something gets bent, they don't make it so you can fix them as readily. Back in my grandfather's day, the water pumps even had a grease fitting that you would grease. So the water pump would last forever instead of having one that's sealed. And when it wears out, it breaks, you got to buy a water pump. You're better off with an adjustable one as long as you know a good front end alignment guy because he's going to have to adjust it. When he aligns the front end, you're going to have to get it aligned anyways when you're done doing all that work. But make sure you get a good guy who knows what he's doing and he'll adjust it correctly. And then if you hit curves and stuff gets bent over the time, he can make some fine adjustments with the adjustable ball joint that he couldn't do if you got the non-adjustable one. Mercedes Benz is overpriced says, I have a Subaru. The coolant is leaking when I rev the engine, but not at idle. What could be wrong? I can tell you what's wrong. You need a water pump. <laughs> That's typical. The water pumps spin to pump the water. Well, when it's just idling, they're going slow, but when you rev it up, they spin real fast. And when the bearings are worn on the water pump, then it wobbles a little and it starts leaking. I see that all the time. Now, go to where the water pump is. All water pumps are made the same. The water pump pumps the water. But then there's a thing called a weep hole on the bottom. It's a tiny little hole. And the reason that hole is there, if the seals start to go, the coolant will drip down out of the weep hole, one, warning you that it's time to change the water pump, and two, instead of if there was no weep hole and the seals go, it could blow the whole pump front assembly into the radiator, knock a hole in it. So they've had weep holes in water pumps for ages. And you'll probably see you get a flashlight. You'll see it's coming out of the weep hole. It's time for a new water pump. 100,000 miles. Yeah, the water pump's gone. It's not that big of a deal changing them, but you'll see that it's the water pump that's leaking. Give us says I have a check engine light blinking. My car won't start. I got an Opal. It blinks for a few seconds and shuts down. And the check engine light blinks. And the scan tool says P1502. Unknown detective trouble code. I can't delete the code. What could it be? Well, one, don't buy an Opal. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, German technology. Of course, it was owned by GM for decades and decades and decades. Get GM has problems with electronics, so did Opal. The problem is, you got a code and it says an unknown code, right? From my experience in most cars, when they have crap like that, you got a bad computer. It's just reading stuff. It doesn't understand what's going on. That or you have a short in the wiring, the computer wiring somewhere, and where there's a short, it doesn't know where the short is. It knows there's a problem. But since it's not the sensor itself, it could have a code for the sensor. Generally, they don't have codes for the wiring, especially on an older one like that. That's a 30 year old car. It's not going to have the software inside itself to know. So if you're lucky, it's a wiring short. And since it's 30 years old, check all the wiring come off the computer. Every stinking one, you'll probably find somewhere there's a wire that's shorted out. Then when you find it, you fix it, you'll probably find out the trouble code's gone and the car will stop stalling out. Up All Night says, what repair manual can you recommend, if any? I got a 2005 F-150 with 200,000 miles. I'll do a lot of fixing myself. What do you think I should do? Depends on how far you want to go and what you want to do. I like the Chilton repair manual, that English guy. Those things are really well made. And so are the Haynes manuals. The Haynes manuals are pretty well made too. There's nothing wrong with them. They're excellent. But if you really want in depth, you can get all data DIY. It's what I use as a professional mechanic, only the DIY, you only get one. You get your Ford. So you pay, I don't know, it's like 30 bucks a, a year or something for a subscription. If you don't want to keep the subscription every year for 30 bucks, you can print everything up if you want. You can print it, then make a book out of it yourself. <laughs>
<laughs> and they're excellent manuals. I mean, they have all kinds of information in it. You get the same kind of information I get as a mechanic, but of course, I pay thousands of dollars a year and I get all the vehicles. Well, not them all, because of course, you can't get Tesla because he's a swine and he doesn't share his information with anybody, so I can get no repair information on them. But any normal car that people drive, it can get information for. You might just check out All Data DIY. It's got an awful lot of information on it. But if you want a book, the Chilton and the Haynes manuals, they're, you know, they're really good manuals. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.